Hey guys, what's up? I'm Slim and you're watching Slimothy TV. Today I have a super exclusive video for you guys. We are going to be taking a quick look at Skyglass for the Mac. Now this program is not just a flight tracker, but it is also an aviation intelligence tool. And I'm going to explain what that means here in a minute. But as you guys can see right now, I've got all of the military aircraft up right now. And just to preface this, I am running this on an M1 Max chipped MacBook Pro with 64 gigs of RAM, and it runs pretty much flawlessly here. Uh, the trackpad can be a little bit tricky sometimes. It would be much better with a mouse, but uh, I personally always use trackpad. And having extra RAM is definitely good for this program. In case you guys didn't know, I actually feed uh, the major flight tracking apps, and that's kind of how you know everyone can crowdsource data for flight tracking. It's a really cool thing, and more people should definitely get into it. But this program pulls from ADSB Exchange and compiles a really, really good amount of data and information about these flights. So I'm gonna to toggle up just a bit here and show you guys, usually these flight trackers are kind of a top down view like this, but this one lets you get a 3D perspective of how high up these aircraft really are. So if I go over here and I just kind of hover over this right here, I can see this flight claims to be at 80,000 feet. It could be a balloon, uh, but let's kind of zoom in here on this reach 4559. Uh, and let's go ahead and click on that one here. So that one is at 37,000 feet. I can click on the image here to get a better idea of what aircraft this really is. You can also see the speed for the ascent and descent. So right now it's just holding steady at 37,000. And since I have this trace button on, I can actually see exactly where that airplane came from. So down here in California, it took off and it's been leveled out. It actually made a little step up right here uh, and got up to 37,000 feet. And it's just been cruising ever since. And we can kind of take a look at it from the top down view now and see it kind of deviated a little bit here. And yeah, this is just really interesting to see. Now I've got mine set to auto refresh every 60 seconds, uh, but you might not want to do that depending on how many aircraft you're tracking. So right now these are mostly all just uh, military aircraft uh, and you can see there's quite a few, but let's just say this looked a little cluttered. Uh, you can go down here and kind of smush these down just a bit. So now you can see more of the map and less of the names. Uh, and I can see really where that track took off that trace as they call it. And if I was really interested in this aircraft for whatever reason, I could just click this magnet here and it will follow that aircraft for me. Now, if we wanna get kind of crazy here, I'm gonna turn off the auto refresh and I'm gonna turn on regular aircraft module here. And this is going to take a second to load. And this is gonna start populating all of these different aircraft. These are non-military aircraft. Uh, and you can see there are a ton of them. So this is going to really bog down your system if you don't have a uh, very powerful machine. Uh, but it is just so interesting to see all the different flight levels of these aircraft. And you can really visualize what's going on in the air. And there's really nothing else like this on the market, but this is literally just scratching the surface here. So I'm going to turn that off again because that is going to really kill my system here and kick up the fans, which we don't want to hear. So if we scroll over here just a bit, uh, there is a C-17 right here. So you can see uh, how he kind of has stepped up quite a bit here uh, on his flight path, but let's go ahead and just turn on traces for all of these C-17s. So this might take a second just to load up, um, but there we go. So now if I zoom out and I'm gonna zoom a little bit back in, you can see all of the C-17s now have their traces up and I can see exactly where they've been and what they're doing. And this can be very valuable because some of these aircraft are not actually on Flight Radar 24 or Radar Box or any of those other uh, applications. So they're very hard to track and this application can do it. So I'm gonna hit the burn right here and kind of clear this all out for me. There we go. And I'm going to show you guys the watch list. So uh, the developer of Skyglass is very active. And if you have any questions, he responds very quickly. And that is something I've noticed over the years of reviewing different products and software. If a developer replies quickly and actually has passion for their project, you know that it's in the right hands and it's going to get even better with time. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen here with Skyglass. Honestly, I don't know what else they could possibly add to this program at this point. It's a complete product right now. And it's actually very reasonably priced at only about five bucks a month. And it's actually even cheaper than that if you buy a year of it at once. So just keep that in mind. But anyways, as you can see down here, if I turn on this refresh, this will constantly refresh every now and then um, these different aircraft on my watch list. So Bill Gates got his stuff here, celebrities, Tom Cruise, for example, the FAA, uh, that because they have a bunch of designated aircraft, this can track all of them. And uh, if you wanted to, you know, see what they're up to, uh, this is a great way to do that. It doesn't look like any of them are currently up. Let's go ahead and switch the auto refresh down to five seconds here. I think that changes this one. Yeah, it does. So I hit the refresh button and I'm still not seeing any of these up. So uh, you know, you win some, you lose some right now. They're not up. It's a Sunday at about 7 30 PM. So yeah, let's say you're just scrolling around and you see an aircraft that catches your attention. Uh, let's say this DC 10 right here, you would click on it just like this to select it. It's up here and then you can easily add it straight to your watch list just by clicking this button right here. And just like that, it's added. Now this one, 
Unfortunately, it was a bad example because they're uh, squawking with fake codes here. Let's go ahead and pick the C17. We'll click on that one, add it to the watch list. And just like that, it's right there. So now I can easily keep an eye on this. I can even go back in time uh, and see where this aircraft has been. I can get information on it. Let's go ahead and load the master database. And now when I click on this little I button, I can see the class, the type, the ICAO, the registration, the flags, everything about these aircraft. This is really powerful stuff. Uh, really cool to see. So this video is kind of more of just uh, an introduction uh, because I'm still learning about this program and uh, I am hoping to make a little series about Skyglass here. So if you guys are interested in this, definitely drop a comment down below uh, and let me know what you want to see because uh, there's a lot here. And honestly, I could probably make 10 videos on this. I'm going to try to keep them short and concise, little bits at a time. But this really was just the first overview. Uh, and as new features are added, I also want to keep making videos because this tool is invaluable. It is just really, really cool. Real quick, I'm going to go over some of these controls right here. So this one adjusts the sensitivity. This one I've already shown you. Uh, you can change the size of these uh, icons. So I like it down there. Now this next one is really cool. It adjusts the relative height of the aircraft elements. So if I go all the way down, you can't really tell quite as much about which one's higher, which one's lower. Uh, if I go down to the plane of view, there we go. But if I scroll this all the way up, it really differentiates the high flying aircraft uh, like these ones up here. Now, these could be misreads. It might not really be at 70,000 feet uh, just because they are NAs, but they might really be. So they could actually be that high. They could be those Google balloons. They're probably spy craft. Um, <laughs> If I had to guess, but anyways, this one over here, I don't mess with this. This is the for fine tuning the barometer height to match the ground map. I personally don't mess with that. I keep that. I just click on this right here and it resets it. So I keep it just how it is. I also keep this automatic sweeper turned on to kind of get rid of the stale information. So if an aircraft hasn't been updated in a few minutes, it'll just get rid of it. There are some more advanced things over here. Like for example, this database right here that you can go through, which is super powerful, uh, but that's for another video. But yeah, if you are at all interested in aircraft tracking, as well as seeing what's actually going on out there, I highly recommend checking this out. AVR Labs is the website to get this from. I will have it linked down below. Of course, this works worldwide. I mean, it's not just the US. I can go pretty much anywhere in the world and see what's going on, especially like with Ukraine and Russia. I can go over here and see what's going on. Not a whole lot right now. There are a few things. This Q4 drone, uh, what's it doing? It's hovering up at 51,000 feet. And if I turn on the trace for that one, I'm too curious about this one. I'm going to set the refresh up to 60 seconds so we don't kill it. And then I will refresh it. And it looks like it just started getting tracked over here. So not a whole lot of data on that one, uh, but you know, it's a drone and it's military. So hey, they might've cut the transponder off for a while. But yeah, you can go pretty much anywhere uh, around the world and see different things. I can go over here to the Middle East. That's what's going on over there. And over here by Japan, there's probably gonna be scrambling some jets over there pretty soon just because of what North Korea is doing. Um, but you can see all of that, whatever's happening right now, and you can see exactly what's going on. But yeah, anyways, guys, I'm gonna stop rambling. This thing is really cool. I highly recommend you check it out. Links down below. If you like the video, hit it with a big thumbs up and subscribe. I do plan on make more as I learn more about this program and as new features are released, I will definitely let you guys know. So that's all I got for this one, guys. Thumbs up, subscribe. Peace.